There are two kinds of weapons of mass destruction, nuclear and chemical weapons. I am not going to talk about biological weapons, because they don't exist. Even when Russia was intensively developing biological agents, they were never actually weaponized and tested. My subject is chemical weapons, which consist of chemical agents and their delivery systems, like rockets and bombs. The modern world has been familiar with chemical weapons for almost two centuries. Their widespread use in war has caused millions of atrocities. The Soviets and Saddam Hussein's regime in Iraq used them to kill their own people. Three times, a number of European countries crafted conventions for outlawing their development, production, and testing of chemical weapons. The most recent one was signed in the 1993. Also was a lease set up of controlled chemical agents and their precursors. Unfortunately, scientific research in this extremely dangerous area was not banned. I am physical chemist and I was employed for almost 26 years at Russia's foremost center of developing chemical agents, Gosnia, in Moscow. I participated in all stages of activity, including scientific research work in the, on the development of the new chemical agents and the production and testing of the final weapons. My last position there was at the head, as the head of the technical control intelligence department of the military chemical complex. I saw that the goal of the leaders of military complex was to eliminate all useless old chemical weapons at the expense of the West and to keep hidden its new generation of chemical weapons under the codename of Novichok. Up to this point, Russia had developed, tested, and started the production of the binary chemical weapons, including the Novichok series, which are up to five to eight times more powerful than those known before. In a binary chemical weapon, the two relatively harmless precursor chemicals are mixed in a rocket in flight to produce a deadly agent for delivery. One military advantage of binary weapons is that dangerous end product doesn't have to be stockpiled. The binary precursors can be produced in normal factories that make agricultural chemicals like pesticides. An Avishok chemical agent is different from Wicks gas, sarin, and so on. Also Navishok and its precursors are not included in the list of controlled chemical agents. On the eve of the signing of the Chemical Weapons Convention, I saw this gross omission was a great, great lie. So I published my first article in the Russian newspaper Kuranti to warn the whole world about this fraud. The only result was that I lost my job. In September of 1992, I co-authored another article published in Moscow News called A Poisoned Policy, which was published the same day as an interview I gave to the Baltimore Sun. Shortly after that, I was arrested for disclosing state secrets and sent to the KGB's notorious Lefortova prison. For the two and a half years that followed, I was supported by a campaign of many people, mostly scientists, politicians, and human rights activists in Russia, in the US, and in Europe who protested my arrest and prosecution. I spent months in a maximum security prison called Matroski Tishina, and the rest of the time under the house arrest until my trial in early 1994. My case was dropped because of lack of evidence. Ultimately, I immigrated to the United States. I want to help the American government to know and understand more about Novichok weapons program. But surprisingly, the CIA treated me as if I were 
spy with extremely insulting questions. Despite that, and with serious reservations, I supported the ratification of the Chemical Wep Weapons Convention by U.S. Congress, hoping that Novichok and its precursors would eventually be included into the list of chemicals prohibited by the Convention. I have waited 14 long years in vain. This is strange to me because so many people supported me in my struggle against the, these extremely dangerous Russian chemical weapons. Ultimately, there is no result whatsoever. I even wondered if the USA and Russia came to some kind of secret agreement to keep silence about this issue. In these circumstances, I didn't have any choice but to write a book, State Secrets, an insider's chronicle of the Russian chemical weapons program, where I published the real chemical formulas of Novichok agents for the first time. One of the main goals of my book is a retool the OPCW, the United Nations Agency, that is charged with implementing the provisions of the Chemical Weapons Convention for real control of the Novichok chemical agents for the sake of the world safety. I also hope to warn people that by allowing countries like Russia to continue scientific research in the field of the chemical agents that we left a big loophole for clandestine relations with the development of new chemical technologies, such a, as nanotechnology, there are probably no limits to, be, to the size of deadly molecules that can be synthesized and used as chemical agents. Nanoparticles can be directly exposed to the victims from the air without the need to vaporize or aerosolize chemical agents. Theoretically, it's also possible that some kind of nanoparticles could be used to break through a gas mask. It's not surprising that gas neoft has been included into the list of so-called system-creating enterprises of Russia by Putin's administration. Gas neoft is also currently working in secret part of governmental company on nanotechnologies. Apparently, for this reason, of military chem the military com chemical complex of Russia appointed a young general from the Directorate of Chemical Troops, Mr. Kondratyev, to the post of the director of Kostnyok, to look more like civilian manager. He even retired from the Russian army. I would also like to emphasize that there is no longer any need to test new chemical weapons and on an open polygon. Everything can be modeled in laboratory with proper equipment.